very pleased um, to introduce Ilit Shapiro from the, he's a professor at the Weizmann Institute. Um, definitely one of the more interesting people I've ever met in computer science. Some of you have already had a chance to talk to him. I hope the rest of you do too. He's a lot, he's a lot of fun to talk to. He's done many, many different things over his career. Currently, uh, he's actually quite interested in um, Web3, and, and specifically today, he'll talk about a new uh, consensus protocol, I believe, the block lace. So. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tim, for inviting me. <clears throat> I already had some uh, great discussions in the morning, so I'm looking forward to continuing them uh, today. And uh, if you have any questions during the talk, feel free to ask them during the talk. No need to wait till the end, so this way I understand better what what you don't understand about what I'm talking about. So um, the talk is based uh, on, on three papers. All are available online. One is a foundational computer science paper, but the appendix actually describes the block list, which is the data type uh, I'm going to talk about as the basis for the protocol stack. Uh, Cordial Miners is a, a joint paper with Edit Kedar and Oded Naor from the Technion, and that's the new consensus protocol um, that uh, I'm also going to talk about. And a third paper is on sovereign cryptocurrencies. And I've already spoke to uh, a couple of you in the morning about them. Uh, I will mention them. That's not the main topic of the talk, but uh, I'll just mention them because they're relevant for the value of the stack as a whole. And uh, if there are questions, time for questions, I'll be happy to answer, uh, answer at the end. But all are available online, and I will share the the PDF with the links, so you can you can access them um, if 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 there's interest. So <clears throat> I was thinking whether I should call it the Holy Trinity or the Unholy Trinity. I said, well, this will offend these people. This will be strange. So I said, just the Trinity, the Trinity of distributed computing. It's probably a good call. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dissemination is the first uh, task. Uh, let others know what I say or no. That's dissemination. Uh, equivocation exclusion, uh, resolve equivocations in what I say, double spending. So if I tell uh, Tim one thing uh, and I tell Andy something else and they're inconsistent, then eventually we should figure this out, you know. Uh, uh, you should figure out that I'm telling different things to different people or double spending your money, even worse. So that's another task. And the third task is ordering. Uh, so you should order everything everyone said. And this is necessary, for example, um, it, is, it turns out it is not necessary for uh, financial systems. That you can do uh, asset transfer networks just with equivocation exclusion without ordering. But if you want to do uh, smart contracts uh, where everyone agrees on what's going on and what, what, what instructions or, or actions are being taken in what order, then you need uh, full ordering consensus. So these are the three things that, that uh, need to be achieved. Uh, and for example, blockchain consensus achieves uh, ordering. And they should be achieved in the face of uh, faulty Byzantine malicious uh, agents or miners or, or adversaries. And there are various notions and definitions. But, but it gets interesting or difficult uh, uh, on, on, when, when they're faulty or malicious uh, agents. These three uh, tasks are solved by, for example, Nakamoto consensus. They're part of the protocol includes the dissemination. The protocol includes ordering. And it turns out that once you have ordering, it's very easy to do equivocation exclusion. You just, all the transactions are ordered. And if there's an equivocation or double spend, you just ignore the second one. And that's it. So ordering solves the equivocation exclusion. But as I mentioned, one fundamental result in, 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 in distributed computing is that you can resolve equivocations without ordering. That's why it's a separate, separate result, separate uh, point. Uh, so what's wrong with the existing blockchain consensus protocols, such as Nakamoto consensus and uh, uh, other similar protocols? First of all, they try to solve all three problems, dissemination, equivocation, inclusion, and ordering jointly. So it's a black box monolithic uh, protocol. And DAG-based protocols, uh, which I'll mention later, are excluded from this. The second is, I contend that they're not scalable uh, for two reasons. One, they use a data structure that's replicated. So when they say they're distributed, the distributed algorithms, I, I think it's a bit of a misnomer. They're not distributed uh, protocols or algorithms that are replicated. So it's, you don't distribute a data structure, different pieces to different people. You replicate a single central data structure among multiple uh, 
agents, miners, what have you. So these are replicated protocols, not distributed protocols or, or decentralized protocols. And the third, uh, and that's specifically for blockchain protocols, that are extendable at a single point at the tip. So everyone is fighting who is going to add the next block to the tip. So the, the, that's the reason why they're not scalable. And the third is that they're not affordable. It requires high performance computers and networks. And part of uh, what I'm trying to achieve uh, is to be able to run uh, things on, 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 on personal uh, smartphones. So our goal is a smartphone ready uh, protocol stack. Um, and that, um, first of all, is modular. So it solves its problem, dissemination, equivocation, exclusion, and ordering separately. And I will show the different applications need different um, parts of the stack, so the, the, they, they don't need to pay the full price of ordering if all they, need to do, all they need is dissemination, or they don't need to pay the full price of ordering if all they need is equivocation exclusion. And I'll talk about that. And scalable, so it uses a data structure that's replicated um, uh, locally uh, and extendable independently. And the third is affordable, so it can run on, on, on smartphones. So that's, that's the overall goal. And this, is, this goal is part of a broader vision uh, or, or, or goal towards uh, uh, digital democracy, grassroots communities, grassroots economy. But, but for the purpose of this talk, this is a sufficient, uh, sufficient uh, description of, of the goal. Uh, and this is more or less a, a, a look at the solution, uh, the, the direction of the solution. So first of all, it's a protocol stack, so you have layers in the stack. And ultimately, you need blockchain consensus or something similar to blockchain, blockchain consensus, but there are lower layers. Uh, below that, there is consensus-free, so you don't need consensus for that. Reliable broadcast, typically you need a super majority, a two-thirds majority, assuming you have less than one-third faulty agents. And you can do asset transfer networks or NFT trade networks using reliable broadcast alone. And uh, what, what this part is novel is, is the, the suggestion that we actually want even simpler, weaker protocols, uh, which uh, I call grassroots, which only do dissemination or leader-based equivocation exclusion. So you don't need supermajority, but it turns out that you can do equivocation exclusion even with, without a supermajority. And I'll, uh, or, or, or two-thirds majority, and I'll, I'll talk about that. And these are matching applications, so if all you want is a, is a social network where people know what other people are talking about locally, through friends, etc. Think about Twitter, but local, local feeds. Then it's enough to have dissemination, local dissemination. I, I follow my friends, my friends' feeds, and if, if a friend follows a friend, then they can see also the friends of the friends, but, but it's, it's local dissemination. And I have a notion of sovereign cryptocurrencies, which actually don't even need reliable broadcast. They can use leader-based equivocation exclusion. And then everything else that you talk about, cryptocurrencies, smart contracts, DAOs, uh, et cetera, need the full, the full scale blockchain uh, consensus. So let's, let's uh, 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 so, so how, how, we, how are we gonna, how am I propose to address this? It turns out that we can use a single data structure, I call the block lace, uh, but it's not that new. I mean, other people proposed similar data structures in the past. So I'm, the name is new, but the content uh, has been uh, proposed in various ways in the past, but not, not the whole kind of vision, but, but just the data structure. Uh, it's a, it's the, best thing to see, the best way to view it is just a partially ordered realization of the blockchain. And I, I'm gonna show you in this talk that you can do all three things with the block list. I was going to say, for equivocation uh, exclusion, are you okay. worried about the order in which I say things individually as well, or is it just what I say? Without you not having okay. The, there are various different definitions, but let, let me give you uh, one which, is comf which fits what, what we're doing, that if you equivocate, then we approve at most one of the two things. So we can, if, if, you, if you try to do two, double spend and either this won't succeed or this won't succeed or none will succeed. So it's okay, it's okay in case you double spend that both of them will not succeed. You have the freedom to reject both or that the, the, the result will be that both fail. In blockchain, this doesn't happen. If you double spend, the first one always succeeds and the second one always doesn't succeed. So this is a very, it's your most strict implementation. But the, the more general definition is that you cannot double spend. So if you try to double spend, 
you either succeed in spending once or once or never. But you cannot, you cannot, not both will succeed. So that's, that's the formal definition. I can't reverse it. I can't make a transaction and then reverse it. Reverse it, reverse it, reverse it, reverse it well, you're already, talking about, you're already talking about implementation. More, more abstractly, mathematically speaking, the outcome of a double spend should be that at most one of the spending attempts will be successful. That's at most one, but not, not exactly one, at most one. That's, 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 a defini that's an abstract definition. That's equivocation exclusion means you cannot equivocate. If you try to equivocate, you fail, either because the other, the other thing is rejected or both are rejected. Okay, that's, the, that's the abstract definition. That's the abstract requirement of equivocation exclusion. Is that okay? Yeah, you're still, you're still puzzled. I'm worried about a situation where I'm, I pay out, she gives me some goods, and then I get a reverse that, that transaction later on by uh, carrying out a double spend, and I got to cancel both the transactions. Okay, so once we agree that this is abstract definition, although this is not the topic, the, this, the main topic, we can, once we talk about sovereign cryptocurrencies, I can show you how you can achieve equivocation exclusion without consensus, without supermajority, simply by the sovereign deciding uh, which transaction to approve. Uh, I'll, if there's time, I'll talk about it. If not, after the talk. But, but it's, it, you have a point, it just, you, it's already a mechanism, a, a, a protocol or a mechanism to realize what you're describing. And I, I'm, at this level, I'm just talking about the more abstract requirement. That what you're trying to do, what you're, the, pro, the problem you're proposing cannot happen. How it cannot happen is already implementation details. Okay? So uh, let's start with a block. Okay, so this is the block. Block has a payload and a cryptographic, collision free cryptographic hash pointer. Uh, hash pointer is it's not really a pointer, it's just a hash value of another block. And collision free, it's our assumption or belief. We believe it will never have a collision. Okay, very, 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 very small probability it'll have a collision. So we believe. And cryptographic is important because it means you cannot uh, uh, compute x given the hash value, which means you cannot effectively create cycles. Even the adversary, even a malicious agent cannot create loops using cryptographic hash pointers because, it, because you cannot guess how the reverse pointer will be without the value of the pointer. Anyway, can, cannot happen. That's, that's a block. Okay, a blockchain is just a list of blocks each one pointing to the previous one, and this one has zero hash pointers. So it has zero or one hash pointers. This is called the Genesis block. And you can look at this elephant from many different directions. I know you've been looking at this elephant, you know, all the time. But for me, these are the three important properties of a blockchain. First of all, it's tamper-proof. So nobody can modify anything without people who look at it seeing that it's been tampered with. Another important one, which is less um, uh, mentioned, but it's very important, it's not repudiable. If there is something there signed by a person or a, a, an organization, they cannot deny that they've done this. You cannot deny creating this block, you cannot deny creating a signed transaction inside the block. And it's totally ordered. That's, that's a blockchain. Okay. Any questions about what is a blockchain? Okay. Now, all I want to do is generalize the block so you can have several pointers, zero or more pointers. Everything else remains the same. And a block list is just a bunch of blocks. That's all. That's a block list. OK, so it's tamper-proof, not reputable. And instead of totally ordered, it's partially ordered. That's all. That's a block list. Uh, and it's a data structure, but it induces a mathematical entity called the directed acyclic graph. So it's a bit more abstract than this. A directed acyclic graph is a bunch of entities, edges, uh, directed edges that do not create cycles. And remember, you cannot create cycles because these are cryptographic hash pointers. So a block list induces a DAG. So when people say, well, it's a DAG, it's not a DAG. It's a data structure that induces a DAG. Okay, so it's a concrete data structure. Okay, so any questions? What is a block list? Important thing is everything here is signed, cryptographically signed. So we assume that the agents, miners, whoever have um, uh, cryptographic, have uh, um, key pairs and they can sign. So everything is signed. And actually, you can see who signed what. So these are, and another requirement, which we'll see from the protocols, is that at least locally, every agent order, totally orders their own block. So when I create a new block, it must point to the previous block. So the red blocks are totally ordered. The green blocks are totally ordered. The 
the blue blocks are totally ordered, but there is also a partial order among them. Okay, so that's if, if the miners are good, you know, they can be bad, but if they're good, that's how they should behave. So let's look at the trinity of distributed computing and see how we can use the block list to achieve them. Let's start with dissemination. And for dissemination, uh, we need to let others know what I say or know. So how can I know that I know something that the others do not know, okay? Uh, the answer is that the block list, in a block list, a block reveals what its creator knows. Why? Because if every time I create a block, I make sure that it points to everything I already have, then people look at the block, see what I know. What I point is what I know. And the transitive closure of the pointers, the, 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 the subgraph that is pointed by my most recent block is what I know. So if I send you a block, you look at it and you see what I know. And if you know something I don't know, and you're a nice, per nice person or a kind miner or a cordial miner, you'll say, ah, I know something that you don't know. Here it is. And you send it back to me. Okay? So dissemination can be achieved in a very natural way by the block list by these two rules. When I send a block, it reveals everything I know simply by having pointers to all the most recent blocks of every other miner or every other agent or whatever. And when I receive something from someone and I know something that he doesn't know, I tell him. That's, that's all. That's block list based dissemination. Now, there is a huge range of trade-offs in doing this. How quickly you do it? Do you always do it? Do you wait a little? Do you tell him everything, even though he might know it in a, in a microsecond later? Or do you tell him only things that happened uh, two, three rounds ago? There's a, there, there's a huge trade-off. Now, there's a, there's a, this is a, a, new, a new approach, so it has not been well studied. But uh, the problem, so-called reliable broadcast, which is a, an algorithm below the hierarchy of consensus, so it's a building block that people use for, I'll mention it, people use it for consensus. Reliable broadcast is a, is a well-studied problem, which has well-known, well-studied, I mean, dozens and dozens of papers on reliable broadcast, and there is a well-known trade-off there between communication complexity and latency, uh, and this, essentially the same trade-off between communication complexity and latency applies also to block list based dissemination. You can be very eager telling everybody everything all the time, what you know and they don't know, and then you have very low latency and high communication complexity, or you can be more modest and say, well, let's wait a little, let's do it probabilistically, let's do this, uh, let's divide the work, let's do sharding, let's all sorts of tricks, and then you decrease communication complexity at the expense of increasing latency. So I'm not getting, I'll, I, will, I will mention specifically how we do the cordial miners protocol, which is an extreme end of the spectrum. We just do very uh, low latency, high communication throughput. But in general, every idea you, you have heard about on this trade-off in reliable broadcast or similar protocols can be applied here to this uh, dissemination. So that's how blockless based dissemination is achieved. Uh, <clears throat> yeah? Should I be thinking about like, anybody proposing a block and predecessors and I'm, I will get there. For now, just think about the social network, not even, not even consensus. I, when I say something, think about so, gossip, just social network. I, I say things, you say things, and if you're my friend, I want you to know everything I know that you haven't, you haven't known. So every block is just an utterance in the social network. Just a, think about it as a, as a post in my uh, Facebook page or a tweet in my Twitter. Think, that, 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 at that level, that, that's all. Later, specific protocols will do, when we have a blockchain consensus, then it'll be very specific. But for now, just think about the most relaxed, you know, setup. I got a question also, just to make sure I'm following. Say, say if we took, just practically like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and say we took two like L1 chain and then forced them to say every day one of the Bitcoin block has to point to both the Bitcoin and Ethereum block and vice versa, so that would be a block. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here's just what I said, that this, this guy knows all this, okay? So when it, uh, when it uh, receives, uh, uh, when, say, this block, this guy receives this block, he knows that he, he doesn't know this and doesn't know that, and can tell him that, okay? Uh, yeah, and, th and this guy knows only that, okay? So the same thing holds. Okay, I mentioned trade-off. Uh, 
between message complexity and latency and all the possible optimizations. Send once, so you maintain a communication history. So if I told you something or you told me that you know something, I will not say it again. Uh, send backlog only in response, uh, delay, randomize, erasure codes, standard techniques. Uh, okay. So what can we do with dissemination? As I said, serverless social network uh, as a foundation. Think about Twitter without a server. Uh, I have my feed, uh, Tim has his feed, everybody has their own feed. If I want to follow Tim, he will tell me, and we are friends, he will notify me. Uh, if, uh, if I want to follow Andy, but, but I'm not his friend and Tim is his friend, then I will ask Tim to forward to me the blocks that Andy issues, and if we are friends, he will do that. And that's how it, will, it can work, intuitively. We, of course, all this can be formalized. But for, for social network, this relaxed thing, you, we don't have to resolve double spans. If I tell different people different things, then they will just think I'm, uh, I'm a jerk and ignore me. So it's, it's all relaxed, you know. OK, so that's, that's that. Uh, equivocation exclusion. How can we do equivocation exclusion? So let's, let's first agree what is equivocation here. This is an equivocation, the blue guy, the green guy. The green guy created two blocks that don't refer to each other. OK, so he, he, he told the, blue, the, the red guy this block and the blue guy this block, this block. So that's an equivocation. That's a fault. And it can only be done maliciously. It's not an accidental fault. You can, because the, 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 the green guy maliciously created two blocks knowing that they don't refer to each other. Okay? So it's a Byzantine malicious fault. Uh, and as I said, the... the, the uh, the blue guy knows this one, the red guy knows this one. That's, that's it. And, uh, but let's say there's a purple guy that happens to know both, then he sees that uh, this is equivocation. Okay? So um, we have a notion that somehow, I've, I haven't been speaking about this a lot, but to the people I spoke with, it's utterly confusing. I don't know why. It's so simple. And, but people, even my collaborators, think it's confusing. So, I don't know. Notion of approval. Approval is a relationship between blocks. And basically, you want to approve a block if, by doing so, you don't approve equivocation. OK, that's intuitive what you want, the approval. Approval is a relationship that must solve this problem. You never approve an equivocation. OK? Formally, a block B approves a block B prime if it observes B prime and does not observe an equivocation of B prime. So if it, even if there is an equivocation, if, and I observe mean in, in the closure of the, in the transitive closure of the pointers, okay? So every block has a, the blocks it observes through the transitive closure of the pointers, okay? So if I observe a block and I do not observe an equivocation, I approve the block. If I observe an equivocation, I don't, I approve neither. Okay, that's very simple. If I see that someone is bad, created the equivocation, I approve, I don't approve, I approve neither this one nor that one. But if I see only one, I approve it. So, following this definition, the red guy approves this block, even though they're equivocating because he doesn't see this one. The blue guy approves this block because he sees this block but doesn't see this block. The purple guy approves neither because it sees an equivocation, okay? Now, it's a property of a block, not a person. The block does not approve this. This block approves this. This block approves this. Okay, that's the definition of equivocation. I don't know. Simple, complicated, confusing. I don't know. That's the definition. Okay. In the previous time, uh, the last green block approves both, right? This one? Yeah, it should approve. Yes, it. yes. This one not approves. This one does not approve. This one does not approve this, does not approve this. No, but it approves the blue block, which approves the equivocation. It's OK, enough. formally, a block, a block B approves block B prime if it observes B prime and does not observe an equivocation. This one observes this and observes this. Therefore, it does not approve. Does not approve this, does not approve this. Also this one. OK, it does not approve. It does not. So as I said, it's a property of a block, not a person. This block approves this. This block, by the same green person, does not approve it. So from the perspective of the green person, he said, OK, this is fine. But then he created another block, which saw the configuration. He said, ah, I made a mistake, or I approved it, but now I don't approve it anymore. 
whatever. So what does it mean to point to blocks but not approve? Approval is a purely mathematical construction. It's a property of a graph, a property of a block in a graph, a property of two blocks in a graph, that's all. Think about it as an extremely abstract mathematical property, relationship between two blocks. The relationship holds if this block sees this block but doesn't see an equivocation of it, that's all. So it holds between this and this, holds between this and this, uh, sorry, holds between this and this, holds between this and this, does not hold between this and this because it does see this. Okay, it's, it's just a binary, a binary relation on DAGs. That's it. Okay, formally speaking. Okay, now the important thing about it, like the magic, is that an agent can approve an equivocation only by being an equivocator himself. Okay, why? Let's say, uh, okay, let's say the blue guy wants to uh, approve both, both of them. How can he do that? He will create one block that sees the only this, and he create another block that sees only this. But these don't block, block don't see each other. So the, he is, the, in order to approve the green equivocation, the blue guy had to equivocate himself or herself. Okay, why? Because if the blue guy adds this pointer, suddenly this block sees both this and this, so he doesn't approve them. Okay, so to approve, it, so if there is someone who is faulty, but malicious, and you want to support him, the only way you can support him is by being malicious yourself. So, if there is a bound on how many malicious miners are there, if there is a minority, of, a super minority of malicious, less than one third, you cannot have super majority approval for equivocations. That's all. Because if you have a bound on the bad guys, you cannot have a super majority of the good guys that, that approve an equivocation. So that's, that's really the, the, the key thing. That if you want to approve an equivocation, you need to equivocate yourself. If, there's, if the number of people who are willing to be faulty or faulty or Byzantine is bounded you, by, less, by minority, less than one third. I, when I say super minority, it's less than one third, super majority greater than two thirds. Think about it this way. You cannot have a super majority approval for equivocations if you have a super minority of, of, of faulty minors. Let, let's, I'll go back to that. So this shows that if um, you use supermajority for uh, approving transactions, then um, you cannot have equivocations and can have asset transfers by, simply by supermajority, okay? So if, if, you want to if you want to see, is this transfer good? Is, this, is there a double spend on this uh, NFT or coin or something? It's enough to have a supermajority approval by this definition of the block list and implement a trade network. Okay, that's, 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 that's the conclusion of the fact that to approve an equivocation, you need to be an equivocator, and you need, if there's a super minority, uh, if there's only a super minority of faulty agents, you can never have a super majority approval for equivocation. Therefore, if there is a transaction has super majority approval, it means that it's okay, you can trust it. You will not, never have super majority approval for equivocations. Okay? So that's what just what I was saying. So, is it correct to say that the safety property, you know, again, assuming super majority honest, um, the safety property is you will never have two blocks confirmed, neither of which is an ancestor of the other? Yes, yes, by the same agent. Because it's a, it, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a DAG, uh, it, it's a block list. So, it's still not totally ordered, but every agent has to order their own blocks. So if an agent equivocates, you will never approve the agent's equivocation. It's, it's just per agent, per miner. And then like liveness is straightforward? Or? Uh, no, no, nothing is straightforward. <laughs> okay, yes. So just to confirm, so say that um, there is some transaction that is initially approved in some block list. And then later, I create a block with an equivocation, and then I broadcast that block, and other people become observe that equivocation. Then after they observe that equivocation, and later blocks that they produce, no. the, so what will happen? The, there was a supermajority of agents that approved one of the, uh, okay. This is, precise, this is precisely the problem that this needs to address. So if, 
if I issued a block and a supermajority saw it and approved it, and I later issue a conflicting transaction, this transaction was approved by a supermajority. It's final. The other transaction will never get a supermajority because no supermajority will, will, uh, will approve it. So, so it's not, that's why when there is an equivocation, at most one will be approved. It's not, not, I don't require that both will be rejected. At most one will be approved. So specifically, if there is a huge delay between the first and the second, typically the first one will be approved and the second not. So how, how do you, or, or what are you asking the block creators to do that maintains that the, so I follow that uh, supermajority maybe almost the entire network observes and approves the first one. After that's observed and approved, after like way later, there's a block that's an equivocation. And then are the minor, the block creators are supposed to never observe this other block? I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm still trading in a very abstract domain still. I'm not, I'm, I'm not yet talking about specific protocols. I, I'm just, at the, at the abstract setup, I'm talking about the mathematical properties of these data structures. The mathematical property is that within this data structure, you cannot find two, 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 two super majorities of blocks by super majorities of the miners that approve an equivocation. That, that's all I'm saying. Within this data type, if, if, the, if this data structure could be infinite, think about it even infinite data structure, it's infinite run. If uh, there, 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 there is a, a supermajority of honest miners, there will never be a supermajority approval of an equivocation. That's all I'm saying. It's a very abstract statement about an infinite data structure, if you will. Okay. So I, I sort of, this is the first time I'm giving my talk, so there's still some glitches. I'm sorry. So I, I sort of ran ahead of myself and spoke already about this, but really I wanted to mention also this. So this even doesn't, this, this even doesn't need a, a supermajority. Sovereign cryptocurrencies don't even need supermajority. Okay, just take it on faith. Uh, and uh, let me just, it's one of the papers, so you can look at it. And uh, it's, it's a whole new topic. It's a whole topic which reach, reaches, it is rich and interesting, and I will not talk about it, because there's no time. If there's time, I'll, I'll get back to the, to, the question, to the answers. But you see it's here. It doesn't need, even need supermajority, and that's the whole notion of grassroots, which means that Communities can start independently. You don't need a count of everybody involved. It's all local, and, and et cetera. So just, so just to follow on Matt's question, I mean, I take your point that you're saying about the mathematical properties, but I wonder if it's just helpful to have a reference naive implementation in mind. So like, let's, like ignoring efficiency, all that kind of stuff, you just think about it like every time somebody creates a block, if you're honest, then you're actually just going to like so you basically look at all of the other blocks that your new block approves. And you just like broadcast signatures to like everybody. No, no, no. Like nothing like that. The, the, all the protocols are based on the fact that people cooperatively create a block list, and eventually everybody sees everything, and everybody computes properties locally from the block list. That's it. That's all. Everybody decides. Everybody can look at the block list and decide what what is true, what is false, what is good, what is bad. But the the whole. The only thing that's happening here, and I'll fast forward to the, to the protocol, to the consensus protocol in, in this layer. The only thing that's happening is that the, the miners or the people, it's true both here in the, in the, in the um, uh, social network and, and also here. The only thing that's happening is that people are created cooperatively this partial order and eventually everybody, so is it correct to say that the data structure itself already encodes all of the votes? Yes, that yes, 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 yes. So you can just look at it statically. Yes, yes. So, so really, the, the, the thrust of the protocols I'm going to talk about here is that the only thing that's happening is that people are creating blocks and sending to everybody else, and then everybody receives the blocks and locally computes whatever they want. That's all. Yeah. And so in particular, like, if you fix the data structure, you don't care the process by which it became that data structure, right? No. The votes are just fixed, just given yes. the size of the yes. data The only guarantee you need is dissemination that everybody will eventually see everything. That's uh, the, the correct, correct miners. That the correct miners will eventually have the same view, that every, correct, every block created by a correct miner will eventually re be received by every correct miner. That's the only thing you need. Everything else is people compute locally. OK. So um, yeah, that's the uh, so no supermajority for, for equivocations. And we are ready to, to talk about ordering.
Okay, so we know how to do convocation exclusion with the block list, now about ordering. And the basic problem is uh, how to turn a partial order into a total order, or a block list to a blockchain. That's what we want to do, right? And there are two requirements uh, that we want to satisfy. So the, the outputs, the, the, block, the blockchains, so every miner sees this ocean of partial order and they want to produce a total order locally. The output, every miner outputs locally to its customers, to its whatever, to its agents, or to run the, to run the local uh, uh, um, uh, smart contracts, VM, whatever, a blockchain. Okay, that's every miner. So the outputs, the blockchains produced by every two miners are consistent. So one is the prefix of the other. So I may be ahead of, of team, or team may be ahead of me, it doesn't matter, as long as the one who is behind is a prefix of the one who is ahead. That's all we need. So I may, I may be computing blocks more slowly, but if what I computed is a prefix of prefix, meaning you know, beginning of whatever blockchain the other guy produced, then it's, we're fine. Yes? Clarifying question. So you mean by outputs of every two miners, the ones that they approve, the block that they approve, or? No, 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 no. no. Think, think, think about it differently. The problem is t turning partial order into total order, okay? The way these algorithms work, and, and I'll, I'll say it's, it's not, these are the existing DAG algorithms work already. I'll, I'll explain it in a second. The way they work is my, miners communicate their blocks to every other miners. So every miner accumulates the partial order locally. And they may have different partial orders simply by order. Uh, so I may see more blocks than you did from, from Tim, and you may see more blocks from Andy because you're closer to Andy. So I may be ahead in Tim's blocks, and you're, you, you may be ahead in Andy's blocks, okay? But when I compute locally the total order, the blockchain from the block list, whatever I compute and you compute are consistent, which means the out, my output will, is either longer than yours and yours is a prefix of mine, or your output will be longer, and mine is a prefix of yours. We'll never, we'll never fork. That's the whole point. We'll never fork. Okay? That's the requirement. We'll never fork. That's, that's a requirement that says never fork. It's not we fork and we recover and we this and this. No. We never fork. Never, ever, ever fork. Okay? And liveness just means that if, uh, if a correct miner created the block, then eventually everyone will output this block. Okay? These are two mathematical requirements from, from such a... A solution, okay? And uh, there are solutions. The, the first, it's not the first one, but the first, the, there was one a, a paper like 20, 20 some years ago in this direction, but no one completely figured it out. It may work, it may not. But Doug Ryder is, uh, was published in PodC21, and it has a successor called Bullshark, which uh, uh, approves it, and, and other people are jumping on this uh, Doug bandwagon because it's actually very good. Uh, has the following ideas. First of all, it uses reliable broadcast for dissemination and convocation exclusion. So it's a black box protocol. Every miner communi communicates to every other miner using reliable broadcast all their blocks. And when, when this round is done, every, every miner is guaranteed to have all the blocks of the correct miners. You know, faulty ones are not guaranteed. Uh, either all miners agree on the same blocks or, uh, or the block is, is, is not there. And there are no equivocations. Okay, so there, by, it, by magically it filters out the equivocations, faulty miners, everything, and all the correct miners have brand new dandy blocks of all, other correct, all, of all correct miners. So that's the reliable broadcast. So it achieves both dissemination and equivocation exclusion. Uh, and they're cordial in the sense that every round, every miner waits for a super majority, at least two thirds of the blocks of the other miners before issuing its next block. So basically the way the protocol works is all miners cooperate, they produce their blocks, send to all other miners, wait to receive supermajority of blocks from the other miners, and then issue the next block. That's all. That's the protocols. And ordering is achieved, and that's uh, the key trick, using, uh, okay, how, how can we turn a, 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 how do we turn a partial order into a total order? There's a thing called topological sort. Topological sort takes a partial order and just stretches it until it's a total order consistent with the partial order. But it has degrees of freedom, you know. Uh, and in particular, uh, me and Andy may not have exactly the same partial orders. So if I stretch it this way and he stretches it that way, we may, be, we may have a fork. So, but we don't want to have a fork. So we agree on something on leader blocks 
And once we agree on leader blocks, we use them as anchors for the topological sort in a way that ensures the consistency or the safety of, of, of our total orders. So the one conceptual trick that these uh, uh, ordering consensus protocols, uh, DAG-based protocols do, is they have a, a magic way to agree on leaders and then use these leader blocks to, to do the total uh, ordering. Okay, that's that, so that's that paper. Uh, these two papers, let me just say, uh, I see faces puzzled, so I'm not sure exactly how, whether I should say a few more words. Do you want me to say, answer, do, you want, do, you want to, do you have a question about these? Yeah. A question about the motivation. My narrow understanding is longest chain uh, allows the possibility of forks, right? That's why it's one of the innovations. So here we're not being able to have forks of okay. the protocol. What okay, are we okay. gaining? Okay, so let, let, me, let me go back. The word, this problem of so-called the Byzantine atomic broadcast, the Byzantine agreement on ordering, uh, has been worked on for 40 years. And there are lots and lots of protocols for that. And this is like the cusp of the progress in this area. And there's Nakamoto consensus, which is theory, seemingly a different branch. Now, all the money was here, right? So the people who did this for 40 years said, hey, I want to make some money too. How can I make money? So they said, okay, well, you can use these protocols by converting them into permissionless, and then you can make money, okay? So uh, Cardano and uh, Algorand and uh, uh, what else? I'm mean, uh, not going to name any projects. So okay, okay, you're preventing. You want to, Say it again? <laughs> I'm not. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> On my shoulders, okay. So they, they okay, how can I make money? I will take these protocols and use them uh, by uh, adding uh, stake-based sampling, okay? So every miner puts um, some stake, and I learned it from some lecture, amazing lecture in, Colum in Columbia University. I will not disclose, I will not implicate anybody by name, but uh, that's, that's uh, what I learned in, 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 the, in the course I took in Columbia. So, um, uh, so you do stake-based sampling. Uh, every miner puts some stake, and then you do random selection of miners based on the stake, and then you have a fixed selection of miners for a given epoch, which could take seconds or minutes or days or weeks. And for this epoch, you have a fixed set of miners which can then run this protocol of these other people who hasn't made money still and want to make money with this work. And that's how uh, th these are the that's how permission permissioned protocols can participate in the permissionless cryptocurrencies uh, arena, okay? So this is a long answer to your question that uh, the, these two separate approaches to uh, consensus, Nakamoto consensus and the previous Byzantine atomic broadcast permission, blah, blah, blah. And the permission can be used in the permissionless using stake-based sampling and now the gates are open, anybody can join. And now the name of the game is who has the best protocol? And we can argue what is best, but presumably High throughput, low latency is, is, a, is a good criteria, are good criteria, and specifically, these protocols seem to have the highest throughput and lowest latency, okay? And highest throughput should be evident because there's nothing is happening except miners create blocks and sending to other miners, that's it. There's no bottleneck, there's no fighting, there's no forks, there's no backtracking, there's no uh, winning, it's cooperative. We all create blocks as fast as we can, and we send these blocks as fast as we can to everyone else, and we're just cordial. We wait for supermajority of blocks before sending our next block. That's all. That's the only thing that's happened at the communication level. At the computation level, here's what, where the magic happens. Everybody looks at the partial order, at the DAG or the block place, and turns this partial order into a total order by magic consistently with everybody else. That's it. So the conversion of the partial order to a total order happens locally by each miner independently. And the magic of the protocol is that they all agree on the same total order, even though they're doing it independently. Okay? And specifically, how they agree? Because they agree on leader blocks. The, uh, leader blocks. And uh, to a first approximation, you can think about uh, deterministic or even pseudo-random selection of leader blocks for every round. So there's all, we all agree on the same pseudo-random function, and every round we have a block, which is the anchor, and then we use it, everything it sees, we use it as, to, to do topological sort for the rest, 
that's, that's a first, good first approximation. The problem is that if the adversary knows in advance what is the, uh, the, uh, the or, uh, or, uh, order of leader selection and say they want to crush this, this currency because it's a bad currency and they want all these people who are trying to join the party, want them to lose a lot of money, then the adversary can block the leader blocks, can somehow prevent the leader blocks from succeeding. And that's why the, these protocols actually for the, for the, in, the, in, the, in the general case, uh, use uh, uh, shared coins for random retrospective, uh, run, uh, retrospective leader selection so that the, even the adversary, nobody knows who is the leader beforehand and only after all communications are said and done, then we retroactively select the leader using random, shared random coin and then compute the partial order in this, add some latency because there are some rounds that nobody knows what's going on, so we are four rounds behind or five rounds behind. Okay, that's very intuitively what's going on. But I remind you that dissemination and convocation exclusion is not done by the block list, by the partial order. It's done by reliable broadcast. And it turns out reliable broadcast has its overhead. You need two rounds or four rounds of communication depending on the trade-off between communication complexity and, and, uh, and uh, latency. And that's why uh, in the Cordial Miners Protocol, which was supposed to be the main topic of this talk, and the next 12 minutes I'll try to, to, to explain it, we use the block list for dissemination, ordering, and equivocation exclusion. Okay? We don't use reliable broadcast as a, as, a, as, a, as a building block. We just use the block list for everything. And the results are accordingly. So depending on the model, eventual synchrony or asynchrony, these are different models of adversary or network. So the, the latency is two compared to four or five compared to eight or whatever the numbers are. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's a better algorithm, more efficient algorithm. And the reason is that we use the block list for everything, dissemination, ordering, and convocation exclusion. So let me explain a little bit how this happens. Uh, a dissemination is just what I said. People, I tell other people the blocks I know that I don't know that they know. That's all. And this is happening here. So let me just read this in English, OK? So this is a code for minor P. So I am minor P. And what I do for every other minor which is different from me, and it's not an equivocator. So I, if I know that someone is equivocator, I already ignore him. You know, these are bad guys. I, don't need, I can exclude them, and this also improves the efficiency of the algorithm, et cetera. So if he's not an equivocator, uh, I send uh, the, the new block. This is the new block I've created. But not just the block, but the closure. So everything the block sees, unless I already sent it to Q. So I send to Q everything I know, except things I know that Q knows already. That's it. That's what it says here. And I add to the history of Q what Q knows, I, I add B. So now Q, knows, Q also knows B. OK, that's it. So that's how dissemination is achieved. Every miner tells other miners the new block he knows, the, the new block, and everything that this block points to, except that the other guy already knows. And the other guy already knows either because I sent it to the other guy before, or I received it. Uh, here, when I receive from Q something, I also add to the history. So when I receive something from Q, I know that Q knows it already. OK? So the history is updated when I send something to people and when I receive something from people. That's, that's the history. OK? And the definition of cordial block is just that there is a supermajority uh, of previous blocks, of the previous round. So I, create, I, I wait for supermajority and then create a block. So that's, that's the dissemination protocol. Blockless based dissemination. And now the ordering. I told you there's dissemination. It's Trinity, remember dissemination, ordering, equivocation, exclusion. So now let's talk about ordering. Ordering, there's a function which is called tau for I forget why. And what it does, it takes a blockless and turns it into a blockchain. That's a total ordering. And the key idea for the safety is monotonicity, okay, with respect to supersets. So Tau works, the, 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 tau, the way tau works is that if I have a, uh, uh, if, uh, if I have a block lace and I apply tau to it, I get a sequence. If the block lace increases, then the sequence increases. So this means that if I have a small block lace and I output something, when I get more things, I don't need to compute tau from the beginning. I just compute the, 
the added, uh, the added uh, suffix, okay? And uh, this monotonicity is really, uh, um, this monotonicity implies safety. Why? Because, um, here, let's say minor one knows broccoli B1, and minor two knows broccoli B2. These are two sub different subsets of the global broccoli. Okay, and he computes the tau of B1, he computes the tau of B2. Since tau is monotonic, then both tau of B1 and tau of B2 are prefixes of tau of union B1 and B2. Now, if two sequences are prefixes of a third sequence, they must be also consistent. One is a prefix of the other. It's not possible the other way. So the fact that these two sequences are prefix of the union, that also means that they are consistent. So this consistency and implies safety. So the only thing we need to show is monotonicity of tau, and uh, that's how tau works. Okay, it's a very simple recursive procedure. And what can I say about how it works? I have one simple question. So, hey, so Ignored efficiency considerations, is it obvious that some monotonic tau should exist? But if I just look at the lexicographically first. No, no, it's, tie, it's very finely tied. For example, ta, ta, tau exists because the protocol is cordial, so you have these super majorities, otherwise it will not happen. And it exists because you have a notion of elected leaders, otherwise it will not happen. And it actually works from, elect, from final leader to final leader. I still have, I, I haven't, Showed all the, it's, it's a very delicate construction that so works only if all components are replaced. Right, so for generic DAGs, you could never have such a No, 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 no. It's very specific to the, to the block list, the way it's created by a cordial manager's protocol, and the idea of, of final leader selection and final leaders, which I have not explained exactly how they're selected. Okay? So it's, it's a very, it's not. A, so it's really not a function from, in parentheses, you have partial order and total. It's not really a function from partial order. It's a partial function. function. It's, it's, it works only on... on, on okay, it's a function from You agree. Function. You're right. You're, this, is, this is an overreach. This is an overreach. It works specifically for the block places produced by the cordial minor protocol. Okay, you're right. It doesn't exist in general. Yes. Okay. So... Um, okay, so the key idea... Let me tell, show you the key idea. This is just to... to uh, uh, to, to tell you that it's, it's, it's not, it cannot be that complicated if, if it can be described by five lines of, uh, of pseudocode. But let me give you the, the idea. Actually, uh, it's connected to biology. Uh, so this somehow, what I've been doing for the last 20 years uh, fits. Um, the way DNA is replicated, uh, the, the replication machine can go only in one direction. But the strand, the DNA double strand opens like this. So this strand, it can go in this direction, but in this strand, it can go only in this direction. So how, how, can, it, how can it do it? It simply adds small fragments, starting every time from the fork. So this lag, what's called the lagging strand is, is, is computed discontinuously by, by different short fractions, which are then ligated. Okay. So if you just reorder it the other way around, so it's the same direction. So the output, the blockchain produced by each miner looks like that. It starts from the next leader and backwards, and the next leader and backwards, the next leader and backwards. That's, that's how it's constructed. So it, it's, it is constructed in jumps, and this delay depends on the partic particular of the protocol, uh, which I will mention very briefly. Um, again, this is basically how it works. You identify uh, final leaders, which I have not defined what they are, but uh, uh, in a minute, and then you, from a final leader, you compute backwards. As the block, block list grows, you compute backwards. And this is, this is all, all the, the other DAG protocols operate the same way. It's not specific to the block list. Uh, but um, what, what the block list does is it, sorry, uh, there's one thing I, wanted, I did want to, 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 to mention in the code, which is very simple, that the topological sort sorts only the approved, the, the blocks approved by, uh, by B, okay? So basically here you do equivocation exclusion. So every miner 
when, when there is a final block that all have, have to agree upon, remember we need to have consensual leaders, leader blocks. So once there's a consensual leader block, we use it to do equivocation exclusion of everything below it in the DAG. And this particular place is what, what it does it. The, the leader block is used, not by supermajority, will, 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 but simply the leader itself decides who, uh, uh, how to resolve equivocations, the leader block. So that's how they all agree on, on the order and resolve equivocation. Should, should, should we think of these leader blocks as like checkpoints? Um, no, the, the, the way to, the, first, it, it is confusing. I mean, uh, many people, they keep changing terminology and all that. The best way to think about it is an agreed upon way to break symmetry. Because the problem is everyone, the, the situation is symmetric. How, how can you break symmetry? We cannot do it deterministically. So we need to do it non-deterministically. And either you use it using pseudo-random functions, uh, uh, which are agreed upon by everyone, or random coins. So the leader blocks are really a way to consensually break symmetries. So that, at that point, you just point to someone and say, pick. This double spend, is it A or is it B? Yes, or none. Or none. Yes. But and that's what the, the Doug Rider does. And they can do it because they use reliable broadcasts. So they've eliminated all equivocations before that. In, 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 in the cordial miners protocol, you, you don't do it, and, and you, win, you win half of the latency because of that, but you're left with the block list with equivocations, and then you have to do what, uh, what you've done. But uh, to do it reliably, we actually have a notion of uh, super ratified leader. So it's, if those who know the Bracha historical algorithms from the 80s for, for uh, these are really the first algorithms for asynchronous uh, uh, consensus. He had a notion of a super, uh, double supermajority. Uh, and it turns out that it's a fundamental notion that you really need it. And so we, a block, a, an elected leader block is final only there is, if there's a supermajority that approves it and a supermajority that observes each, each one. Of, okay. There is a supermajority that each member of it observes a supermajority that approves it. And that's the notion of finality. And the reason why we need such complicated notion of finality, which is sort of at least two rounds, but maybe more depending on, on, on various things, is that you want subsequent leaders not to be able to bypass this leader. And here it comes the, 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 where cordiality is needed. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing this gone since I have one minute. But if this is, has a super major, this is super ratified, and this is a, a cordial block, then, for example, look here, there must be a, uh, a block in the intersection. So this block will see this block in the intersection, which sees a supermajority, which sees that. So basically, this one sees a supermajority that approves everything that can decide for this and for everything else. So you have every decision does have supermajority support of, of miners, and therefore, uh, you, can, you, 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 can count, you can count that it doesn't have uh, faults. Okay, that's that's uh, hand-waving, but that's, that's the core of the proof, that because a combination of requirement of double supermajority and cordiality, this, this is cordial block, so it observes the supermajority, it either has an intersection here, or it has a correct minor that is common to here and here, and since this minor is correct, it has a path, because a correct minor has a path from each block to its previous block, so this guy sees this, this block, which goes through a path to this block, which sees the supermajority, which sees this one. So, so the role of the cordial assumption, that's just to make sure everybody knows supermajority is up to date? The, 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 the cordiality implies that there is a supermajority here that you see. And since you require supermajority support here, they must have an intersection. These two supermajorities of a correct minor, and therefore, you have a path that goes through correct minors that sees a supermajority that, sees, that, that approves this, this uh, leader. And, and then this leader is final if it has this structure, and that's tau, how tau computes. And the monotonicity is guaranteed by the fact that a new leader will necessarily see this leader and therefore will only extend the, the, uh, the output sequence so everything up to here can be cached because he cannot, bypa he cannot bypass it because it, it's guaranteed to see a supermajority that sees, uh, it's guaranteed to see someone that sees the supermajority. So it can, this leader cannot bypass this leader. And that's why you can cache 
That's, that's the finality. That's why there's never forking. Because once a leader is final, every future leader will see it and will never try to bypass it through another path. Because remember, the block lace or the DAG, it's the same in both protocols, uh, grows differently in different miners. I mean, different miners see different partial views of it. But this guarantees that once they output something, they will never regret it or never, never fork on it. That's, that's the, the, the safety. I will, uh, I will, liveness is even more complicated to prove. 80% of the work in the, in the paper was, to, was on proving the liveness, but I, I'm already over time. So uh, I will just uh, say that we have, uh, the, the protocol works for both eventual synchrony and asynchrony. And these are two different models of, um, of uh, distributed systems with adversaries. And the wavelength, the, the, the gap between two leaders, here it's two and here it's five. Here the prospective leader selection, which means random, uh, pseudo-random, but here it's retrospective, so it's shared coin. And here there's some complicated conditions for finality and for completing rounds. And probability of wave success here is four ninths and here is two thirds, which is the way we, 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 from which we derive the, the expected latency. So uh, going, going back to the, uh, to the table, so we have achieved all these three goals uh, within the block lace in a protocol. Th these are by far the best protocols until now, much faster than all the alternatives. And also experimentally, the, the Bullshark guys uh, have implemented it and, and showed performance numbers that are off the charts. So this is even simpler and, and faster than, than Bullshark, by right, twice the latency. Um, and I should say that this is sort of an accidental. It was not the, I was really looking at the, the grassroots bottom-up kind of uh, protocol stack and the fact that the ch there's a cherry on top, you know, with the consensus protocol that's faster than all the rest is, is a bonus. It's not, uh, it was not a research goal, but is, is a, a happy, happy accident. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the end of my talk. Yeah, this is, okay. First of all, just to confirm, uh, there is an impossible result for asynchronous protocols, right? And the cordial assumption is what makes that result not no. quite Actually, what, ha what makes this result work is, uh, is already in the Doug Ryder protocol. It's not new to us, not new to, well, I, us is sort of because I, this paper, Cordial Miners Protocol is co-authored with some of the, the, the authors of the Doug Ryder protocol. So let me uh, go back to that. Here, the ordering is used consensual ledger blocks, uh, and these are elected using shared random coins. So the, the FLP result or the, this is, is countered by electing the, the, the blocks that break symmetry using a shared random coin. So you add randomness to address the FLP theorem. That's why it works for asynchrony. And I guess the, the separate question is, uh, you can consider a weaker notion of safety that isn't prefix consistency, it's just no inversions, mm. uh, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. And like, do you think that is not sufficient or like has anyone looked at whether it's um, that? Okay, this weaker notion was invented by people who didn't want to go all the way down to here. So actually, you don't even need this is, the, this is the true weaker notion. All you need is supermajority approval. You don't, you don't need to talk about order at all. Just supermajority approval uh, to, to eliminate equivocations. Here, the reason, we, the reason I'm, I'm interested in this, it's not that I'm not in, uh, definitely it's important to have order and consensus because th these are important applications, but these are even more important, if you will. Uh, for example, if you need democratic DAOs, you cannot do democracy without total ordering because you need to know if votes happened before or after the closure of the, of the ballot or you know, things like that. So um, uh, for that, anything that has to do with the smart contracts and, and, or, or um, replicated state machine, you need total ordering. Because if you change the order of things, the result of the computation will be different. So, so for, for the important applications here, the weaker notion of consistency is not good enough. And for these 
uh, applications, you don't even need that. So it's, it's like a hybrid thing which is too strong for what is for this application and too weak for these applications. That's why, personally, I think it's not a useful notion. But I may be wrong. I'm, I'm, I, may be, I, may have a, I may have an error of perspective. But from my perspective, it's not needed. It's too strong for this and too weak for this. One final thing, um, and is there a way in which to have tau safety you need cordiality? Like is there a way what? To have tau, this is not well defined, but it feels like to have the tau safety property you need cordiality. Yes, uh, yes. Do you show that or you just think this true? Well, uh, personally I'm quite weak on negative results. I prefer to work on positive results and let other people prove negative results. So nobody, uh, this is all very new. So uh, I don't know. I know that we need it for tau to work, but we haven't proved that uh, you cannot do without it. Yes? At the beginning, you said that one of the properties you wanted was scalability. Can you say a bit more about how we achieved that here? Yes. Um, OK, let, there, there, it's a huge question. I'll try to answer. Uh, Briefly. So first of all, here at this level, uh, scalability is achieved essentially like Doug Ryder um, by, um, first of all, you, you have to agree that you don't need an unbounded number of miners. I mean, it's not scalable with the number of miners, but who need infinitely many miners? I mean, people agree that with, you get reasonable safety with you know, few dozens or hundreds of miners. You don't need more than that. In, in, a, in a reasonable setup to, to feel comfortable about, depending how they're elected, et cetera, et cetera, if they're sampled from a large population. But, but, uh, but uh, so it, these protocols do not, the, the, the com complexity is, is quadratic in the number of, uh, of miners, okay, typically. Uh, but let's assume that you have a, agreed on some reasonable bound on the number of miners, then what's happening there is just extremely, extremely simple and efficient. The only thing that's happening is that every miner collects transactions, puts them in a block, creates, adds to the block pointers to the most recent blocks it saw in the, in the DAG. And it, it doesn't even have to have blocks to everybody else because if I got a block from someone that already points to other blocks, I don't need to point to the other blocks. I, it's enough that I point to him, you know? So it, it, it's, not in the, in the, it's not necessarily even n pointers in each block. You may have less. And I send it to, to, n, to the other n miners. That's all I do. My, my, the round of a miner is just load transactions into a block, add pointers, send to n miners. Load transactions into a block, send, add pointers, send to n miners. And between them, I wait for supermajority of blocks from the other miners. That's all. Everything else is happening locally as, as, a, as a computation. So that's, in that sense, um, just specifically head to head with the blockchain consensus or other protocols for, or, or other standard protocols for Byzantine agreement, which are leader-based, whatever, this is extremely relaxed and efficient. I mean, I think that it's fair to believe that you can get arbitrary large throughput with, with, this, um, with this protocol. Because you just load transactions sent to everybody, load transactions sent to everybody. That's all, the only thing that happens. The rest is just local computation of ordering this. That's at this level. At this level, I say something much stronger and broader, uh, and I want this to be grassroots. What does it mean to be grassroots? It means that uh, people in Timbuktu or Senegal or Israel or Tangier or New York can all start independently their local whatever, local social network, local networks of sovereign cryptocurrencies. They can start them independently. And eventually, if someone is, happens to be connected to two communities, then these two communities will connect. Or if I establish connections with someone from another community, these two communities will be connect and still continue to work. We don't need to reboot. We don't need to start with a new directory. We don't need a new epoch. We need, it just grows and grows and grows independently, in parallel, and interconnected. And these protocols support this uh, uh, notion of grassroots. And in, this sense, they're, they're, in, in that sense, they're scalable. Okay, and again, the, the, 
we, we need to talk specifically about the tasks, but both for this task and for this task, the communication is always local and, and linear and the number of whatever. Okay, but that's a different notion of scalability. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>